Dirty water, clean it up with mycoremediation. Mycoremediation by Robin Bautista, Amanda Ravis, Whitney Farber, and Michael Silas. What is mycoremediation? Mycoremediation is the use of fungi to degrade pollutants from the environment. Fungi can be used to efficiently remove biological toxins such as bacteria, chemical toxins such as aromatic toxins found in petroleum, pesticides, and herbicides, industrial toxins like heavy metals. Biological mycoremediation. Many fungi feed on bacteria that are pathogenic to humans, such as E. coli and salmonella. There can be as much as eight miles of mycelium in one cubic inch of soil, making the mycelium a great filter. Mycological biofilters can be placed near livestock farms and shoreline plantings to reduce biological contaminants in waterways. In a study done by the well-known American mycologist Paul Stamets, durable and ecologically resilient fungi were identified and used to make a low-cost biofilter called Mycofilter TM. Since pollution from pathogens is the leading cause of critically impaired waters nationwide, with stormwater strongly linked to this contamination, the research of this study focused on the removal of E. coli from water. The conclusion of the study is that mycofiltration may be effective against sediment-bound bacteria, in some cases removing almost all of the E. coli contaminant. Chemical Microremediation Healthy microbial communities work with fungi to break down contaminants eventually into water and carbon dioxide. Some fungi are particularly well adapted to break down aromatic pollutants present in petroleum, pesticides, and herbicides. Well, one might ask, how do you clean up the earth using microremediation? Well, one, mix mycelium into contaminated soil or place mats of mycelium in contaminated water. Two, add some compost and wait. While you wait, the fungus releases enzymes that are capable of breaking down cellulose and lignin, which are components of wood. Scientists have identified over 120 types of enzymes in mushroom-forming fungi. These enzymes have the ability to break down a wide range of toxins that have similar bonds to those found in lignin and cellulose. On this slide, you can see the molecular structure of wood versus the molecular structure of hydrocarbons. On the left is a wood structure. The top is cellulose and the bottom is lignin. On the right is the molecular structure of hydrocarbons found in petroleum products. As you can see here, these structures are very similar. Native mushrooms are better to use. Native species are better adapted to the environment and so are better able to clean up toxic messes. Some strange strains and species can be better suited to different toxins and environments. The saltwater oyster mushroom strand is an example of this. Researchers found one strand of oil-eating oyster mushrooms that survive in saltwater environments. The mycelium fully colonizes straw soaked with seawater. This species can be very useful in offshore oil spills. Our second case study is about the oyster mushroom. This mushroom thrives in saltwater. It was used in the 2010 BP oil spill in the Gulf of Mexico. The aged mycelium of this fungus forms the oyster mushroom. When the mushroom is combined with compost, the result is a better degradation than either could do by itself. This mushroom has various enzymes to break down a wide variety of hydrocarbon toxins. Researchers tested inoculated diesel contaminated soil with oyster mushrooms and found that they reduced the concentration of toxic hydrocarbons from a dangerous 1,000 parts per million to just under 200 parts per million over a 16-week period. Wow, that's true mycoremediation at work. There are elements to this remedy, such as if the mushrooms are safe to eat or to what extent the soil is usable for farming that is still unknown. White rot fungus. 
It is an excellent bioremediator. The secret enzymes include lignin peroxidases, manganese peroxidases, and lacases. These enzymes are nonspecific to substrates. The enzymes are extracellular, so the fungi can withstand high concentration of pollutants. White and brown rot fungi are two groups of fungi commonly used in microremediation. White rot fungus has been shown to be the most effective fungus at removing toxins containing hydrocarbon bonds. These enzymes are nonspecific, so they can degrade a wide variety of toxic, toxic substances with their similar structures to lignin. Because fungi grow via hypeful extension, the fungus can reach pollutants in soil more effectively than other standard methods. It doesn't eat lignin or hydrocarbons, but it does require other substrates for a carbon source. Industrial microremediation. Living microfilters can capture runoff from mills, manufacturing plants, power plants, and farms. Fungus can be used in brownfield sites to bioremediate complex carcinogenic compounds before they reach groundwater. In general, the term brownfield site means any land that may contain hazardous substances or pollutants or contaminants. Michael Price, John Klassen, and Gary Payne produced a study where six fungi were tested to see how well they would absorb copper and zinc from a water source. Aspergillus niger was selected as the best candidate for its ability to grow rapidly and ability to remove heavy metals. Aspergillus niger was able to remove 91% of all copper from the runoff water of a swine farm. The same fungi was able to remove 70% of all zinc found in the wastewater over a 24-hour period. It was found that the fungi filtered out more metal if it was cultured under heavy metal conditions similar to those it would see in the swine farm. How to train your fungus? How to train your fungus. Mushrooms can be trained to break down toxins such as PCBs, PNT, dioxins, or other toxins. Fungi can be cultivated to break down harsher toxins than what is actually in the environment to make them more efficient. In summary, there are many benefits to microremediation. It is a technology based on natural systems. Only native fungal species are used. There is minimal handing, handling and low maintenance. There is visible improvement to a site, and it can protect local water quality. Thank you so much for listening to our presentation about micromediation.